Vlog year day 27. So continuing with the questions here, I've moved onto my couch so it's a little bit more comfortable and so you guys have a slightly different background so you're not staring at the exact same thing in every one of these videos. But um, it looks like all of these questions today are also from Twitter. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Question number one comes from HLFanatic01. What do you think is going to be a big trend in the spring and summer? I actually really like this question because I feel like different people can predict different things. Personally, my prediction is that nudes and brights will be very popular, not only on their own, but together. So the combination of nudes and like neon colors, both in clothing and makeup, and I'm really excited for that because I love that combination. Question number two comes from Daisy Forgiven. What were you like in high school? Obviously you were a swimmer. What else were you into? So this is kind of like two questions in one. In high school, I... I always felt a little bit weird in high school just because I had different groups of friends and I would kind of like spend time amongst those different groups of friends and the main difference in my group of friends was that I had a group of friends that were very girly and into just girl stuff and then I had my group of friends that was really like nerdy and geeky because I had a lot of advanced placement classes and accelerated classes so those were the people that I would have classes with and also upperclassmen too. So I kind of had like multiple groups of friends. So I was friends with upperclassmen, people that were older than me. And I was friends with really intelligent, funny, nerdy people that I absolutely loved being around. And then I was friends with like really girly girls too. And I always felt a little bit weird because I felt so torn. Um, especially between like the girly girls and the nerdy people because I could totally relate to both. I am a huge, huge, huge nerd, like total geek. So I loved being around those people and I loved talking to them and their sense of humor. But then I also loved hanging out with my girly friends and doing girly things. So I always felt a little bit torn and that's why I love YouTube so much because I feel like both sides of me are able to come out. I feel like I'm able to express my silly, goofy, nerdy, geeky side and also my girly feminine side. So that is what I love about YouTube and um, that's kind of what I was like in high school. I was just a mixture of a lot of things. And I can definitely be really weird sometimes, but I can also pull it together and be serious and I can be an adult. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of interesting because a lot of those things are reflected here on YouTube, but then a lot of things aren't reflected on YouTube because with these vlogs, you see glimpses of my life um, and it's not a total, like, And then the last part of that question, what else was I into in high school? Um, I was really into, aside from swimming, which I kind of almost saw as like my job in high school. Like I, I was very like, so this, so now answering the second part of that question, aside from swim, I was into art and drawing and just just being a teenager pretty much. So um, I really started to get into music more and I think that's when my music taste really started to develop, to de bleh, to develop more. I got into more indie music and alternative music and yeah. So that was me in high school. Question number three from Mega Call. What nationalities are you? I am American, so I was born here in the United States, but my mom is from Thailand, so I am the first generation 
that was born here on her side of the family. So I am half Thai and my dad was Norwegian, Swedish, Irish, and French. So that is my mixture. Um, number four from Hey It's Me, Becca T. What has been the most meaningful event slash experience in your life so far and why? I would have to say the most meaningful thing that has ever happened to me is um, my dad passing away. And it's meaningful, not in a happy, joyful way, but it's meaningful because I think it really affected me. Um, it made me mature, but it also helped me to kind of loosen up a little bit more and just enjoy life and to come out of my shell more. And YouTube has also helped me come out of my shell more because I used to be really, really shy. And after losing my dad, I saw how valuable life is and how quickly it can be taken away. And it just made me more comfortable in my skin. And I, I'm not afraid to be like goofy and silly and just plain weird. I am not afraid of doing that now. And I really feel like I have come into my own skin. And of course, if I had the option of like having my dad here, I would choose that. But I try to see the best in situations and turn negatives into positives. So I would definitely say that that is the most meaningful thing that has happened to me in my life so far. And the last question of the day comes from Ella Krell, or maybe it's Ella K. Rell. Um, how do you pluck up the courage to tell a guy you like them? Are you ever scared of rejection? So another two-in-one question. Um, I, coming from a person that used to be painfully shy, I never, like, approached guys when I was, like, really, really, really shy. I feel like, um... Getting the courage to go up to a guy really comes from within and you need to be in a place where you are ready to date and you feel comfortable with yourself because I feel like that is reflected when you are around people and it definitely shows. So I would not rush into anything. If you feel like you are not ready to start dating, then don't do it. But if you're just like nervous and you have butterflies that's totally normal and I say just go in with the mindset of okay what's the worst that can happen this is what I do with lots of situations I always think of the worst case scenario and once I know what the worst thing is that could happen then I'm just like well that probably won't happen but even if it does it's not the end of the world and there are plenty of other things that are very bad that could happen and I might as well just suck it up because you only live once and if I don't do it now then I'm going to be wondering what if and that is the worst feeling to ever have is the feeling of oh what if um so I just learned to kind of bite the bullet and just go after things that I want even though I am Deathly afraid of rejection. So afraid of rejection. I would put it in the top three things that I am afraid of along with spiders. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, rejection is something that no one wants to experience. But I think it's good to experience because it just gives you um, more life lessons. And um, I have definitely been rejected in my lifetime but it's only made me um, more comfortable with approaching people and um, pursuing things that I want. So in the end, to make a long story short, go, af go out there and go after the things that you want. Even if you are afraid of rejection, the more that you pursue things, the more comfortable you will become. It will definitely take time and it is a slow process. It's not something that happens overnight, but I think it's a good thing to do and you can learn a lot. So that is my take on it. And that is all for today. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.